Hi, Legacy. My name is Laura Morales, and I am a pastoral elder at Metro Praise International. It is an honor and a privilege to be here with you today. I have a simple message to bring to you, but I pray that it blesses you despite its simplicity. The title of my message is Humility versus Anxiety. We know that anxiety is all about control, right? I need things to go my way, exactly how I want them, when I want them, now, right? It's all about our ability or inability, right? To control our circumstances, other people, and pretty much anything. Humility though, is the opposite of that. Humility acknowledges our place in the universe, acknowledges that we are definitely not God, that we have little control, and that we can do our best and then surrender the rest, right? And surrendering actually means to cease resisting, right? So when we think of war, the enemy seizes, the enemy stops what he is doing and he surrenders. We surrender under the authority of God, right? God is our partner. We fight with God, not against God. That is humility. And that is why it is such an opposite to anxiety, okay? So when anxiety says, I have to control everything and everything has to go my way, humility says, I am going to do my best, Lord. I am doing what you've called me to do to the best of my ability, but the outcome is in your hands. I'm going to lay it here at the altar and it is up to, up to you to use my work and my talents however you please right? Humility knows that the only control that we have is our actions and our words. We can decide how we're going to react to things because we can't control our circumstances, but we can control how we react to them. We can't control what people say to us, but we can control what we say back to them. So there is some control, but not all of it, not as much as anxiety would like us to believe. Our main scripture for today is Matthew chapter six. If you can go with me there now, Matthew chapter six, verses 25 to 34. And I'm gonna be reading from the ESV version. My Bible titles it, Do Not Be Anxious. Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither soar nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon, in all his glory, was not arranged like one of these. But if God so clothes the, the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you? O oh, you of little faith. Therefore, do not be anxious, saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly father knows that you need them. Verse 33. 
but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. So there's a lot that I just read here, but I want us to focus on the fact that there is a command and directions. And then if we follow those directions, they come with a promise, right? So Matthew is telling us that we are to worry about nothing, right? Jesus tells us that we are to worry about absolutely nothing. This world tells us we have to work and we have to wear the, the best clothes and we have to meal plan and we have to do all these things. And don't get me wrong, planning is good and thinking ahead is great. However, when it becomes a burden, when it becomes something that you are worried about, that's when it's a problem. It gives us two examples here. It gives us flowers and birds. Have you ever seen a bird rushing to work with his little suitcase or his little briefcase? No, that, that sounds silly, right? And yet they eat and they have abundance. I'm sure if we could ever talk to a bird and ask, hey, do you ever grow hungry? Do your children ever go hungry? They're going to be like, no, there is so much food. And yet they never go to work. Same thing with the lilies, right? The flowers. There's beautiful, beautiful flowers. I worked at a flower shop um, right after high school for about a year. And I love that experience because the beauty that God has created, right? And it, it tells us right here, it's not like you will see them knitting a sweater or, or going shopping for the latest trends. No, the Lord clothes them and he clothes them so well and so beautifully that not even Solomon, right? The richest man that ever lived look like the flowers of the field. And what do birds and flowers have in common? They don't work, right? The Lord takes care of them. The Lord puts them on the earth. The Lord takes them away. And, and throughout their lifespan, whether short or long, the Lord takes care of them. Well, how much more does he not take care of his children, right? We're told here not to be like Gentiles. Who were the Gentiles? The Gentiles were the people that were outside of Israel, right? Outside of the covenant. That means that they didn't know God. But for those that do know God, right? For those of us who have his word, who know who God is, on a personal level, who have experienced him before, we can't be like that. They worry about all these things, right? They worry about their jobs and about their food and about their clothing and about their everything. But we who know God should know better. We who know God should not be anxious about anything. And so what happens, right? Because we follow that command, do not be anxious, there's a promise. The Father knows what you will need. The Father knows, verse 32, that you need them all, right? It's not like he is a distant God who, who creates you and sends you into earth naked, no. He thinks of every little thing. He gives you a mom who can feed you and take care of you and nurture you. He gives you a dad who is there to support mom and feed you and nurture you and, and, and help you grow up. And then you grow up with these resources and these abilities and these talents and these skills that the Lord put on your life, right? And you're able to continue that. But we don't continue that with just to continue, right? Just to work another job or just to get another degree. No, we continue that for his kingdom. Verse 33, but, for, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things will be added onto you. What a beautiful promise that is. Not only does the Lord know what you need, 
But if you put him first, his priorities first, he will give everything else to you. That's beautiful. That is a promise that I live by every day and that I encourage you to live by every single day, right? And that's where humility comes in. And that's why it is so opposite to anxiety. Anxiety says, I need to do this and this needs to go my way and this needs to happen now. And humility says, wait, this life is actually not about me. It's about God and it's about eternal. And what is the only thing that's eternal? His kingdom, right? Because just like the grass of the fields, it's here today and gone tomorrow. That's our life. It might feel long, right? Our days feel long. But when we look back, the years actually feel really short and time is just quickly going by. There is nothing of eternal value, no matter how much thought you put into your next meal. In, in 10 minutes, you're not even thinking about it anymore. In 10 years, you're not going to remember. In 100 years, it's not going to matter what you wore. But the kingdom is, and what you do for God is, that has eternal value. So we're told here, right? We're given a command, do not be anxious about anything. And then we're given a promise because he already knows what you need and he will provide it for you. And again, the command is seek first the kingdom of God. And the promise is, and all these things, what are all these things? All these things that the passage just talked about, the clothing, the food, all these things that fill our mind that are not eternal, but we still need them, right? We still need them to survive. We don't want to walk around naked or hungry. He's going to give us those things. Every day has its trouble. So just let it have its trouble. Be humble enough to understand that. Be humble enough to know that the Lord is already in your tomorrow, that the Lord already knows what's going to happen. He is not surprised, right, that there's traffic on the way to work. He is not surprised that your kid doesn't want to put his shoes on when you're running late. All these things that cause anxiety, We need to be able to be humble enough, humble ourselves to know it's not about us, right? These things are not going to matter in the future. There's always a blessing in humility, always, right? The Bible talks about how the Lord opposes the proud. I don't know about you, but I never want to be opposed by the Lord. The creator of the universe who made me and everything else. No, I want the Lord to be on my side, right? So the opposite of humility is not only anxiety, but it's also pride. It's prideful when we think we can control things. It's prideful when we think everything should go away and everything should happen in our timing. That's prideful. That's also unrealistic, right? We must learn to be able to surrender ourselves and, and, and go under the authority of God. And there is blessing in that. Not only is there blessing, but there is joy and there is peace. Go with me to Philippians 4, very common, popular passage. Philippians 4, we're going to be reading from verses 4 through 7. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your mind 
and your minds in Christ Jesus. So for those of you that maybe do offer, do, do suffer from anxiety, and it's something that you have to fight against every day, you're probably sitting here like, yes, this sounds great. And I know I shouldn't be anxious, but I still am. So how do we combat anxiety and focus on humility? It's actually quite simple. We combat anxiety through prayer and gratitude, right? You cannot be both anxious and grateful. It's, it's quite impossible. Let's think about it, right? If I am worried about something, that means that I am focused on what is wrong. But if I am being grateful for something, I am focusing on all the things that are going right or are right in that situation, in that person, in that room, whatever that is. So anxiety and gratitude also can't coexist. Anxiety and joy cannot coexist. If you walk into a hospital and you go into the waiting room of, of the surgery, right? Someone is waiting for their, lo their loved one to come out of surgery. You will never hear someone say, I am both worried and joyful. No, usually they'll say, I'm very worried and they're pacing, right? If you've ever waited for someone to come out of surgery, you're probably pacing that room because you're thinking of all the possibilities that could go wrong. The opposite of that is to be grateful, right? Even if you do have to be in that room, Lord Jesus, thank you that we are in a country that offers surgeries. Lord Jesus, thank you that we have the choice of doctors. Lord Jesus, thank you that we caught this and that there's something we could do about it, like surgery, as scary as that is, Lord, thank you. Lord Jesus, thank you that I am not in control, that I am not the surgeon, and that there is people that are way more skilled than I am to take care of this person that I love, thank you. So it's not that you can't have anxious thoughts, right? Those are going to come. That, that comes with the, ther uh, the territory of being human. But, that you, but the point is that you have to combat those with humility and with thanksgiving. Just like we saw in Philippians 4, 4.4, 4, right? It says, he's commanding you, rejoice, have joy, and you can't have anxiety and joy. We already talked about that, right? Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your requests be known to God. There is a command again, right? There is an instruction. It says, do not be anxious about everything, anything. And then it gives us our instruction. Instead of being anxious, you are to take those thoughts captive, right? You are to take that feeling and lay it out at the altar and say, hey, Lord, here's what I'm feeling. Please, Lord, take it. I don't want it, right? In prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Thank you, Jesus, that you will use everything for your glory. Thank you, Jesus, that although this is uncomfortable or hard, whatever, fill in the blank, I know that you are in control even though it does not feel like it, even though I would not have chosen this for myself. You are in control. Thank you. Make your request known to God, right? And then the promise. It's not that he's just writing them down, right? It's not that he's just listening. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. Got it. Mm-hmm. Got it. Yep. Check. Got it. Heard your prayer. Cool. I'll see you tomorrow. No. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The promise, when we obey the command of do not be anxious about anything, the promise that comes out of it is peace. 
there is people going through the worst of circumstances and yet there is peace. There is peace in the hospital room. There is peace in that home. Peace just radiates through their pores. That peace only comes through God. And if you ask any, any of them, they will tell you that it only came through prayer and thanksgiving. The peace that surpasses all understanding when it doesn't make sense to the world, why you're not worried. Right here, because you have peace that surpasses all understanding. And then it says, he will guard our hearts and our minds. Who will? Jesus. Jesus will guard our hearts and minds, right? When those thoughts come, when those circumstances beyond our control come, because they will come, if you haven't experienced them already, they are coming. He, he will protect our hearts. He will protect our minds. But we have to be abiding in him. We have to be connected. We have to be in communion with him. Otherwise, they're going to go rampant. Otherwise, it won't just be a thought. It'll suddenly become a lifestyle. I don't know about you, but that is another promise that I want to hold on to and believe and declare. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. He guards my heart. He guards my mind. Why? Because I am humble enough to understand that he is in control, that he has allowed for this to happen, right? Humility is not passive. It's not, I'm going to sit back and see what happens. It's not, well, I just, you know, it's, it's beyond my control and there's nothing I can do about it. No, it's not passive. It's not being lazy. It's doing everything we can, right? It's doing our best. It's working hard with our hands. It's putting our mind to work. It's putting our heart and still having that attitude of surrender. But still, Lord, your will be done, not mine. Your kingdom come, Lord Jesus. Right? Being humble always comes with a blessing and it always comes with a reward. To finish, we're going to end in Proverbs 22, 4. Proverbs 22, 4 says, The reward for humility and fear of God is riches, honor, and life. I'm going to read that again. The reward for humility and fear of the Lord is riches, honor, and life. I want that reward. Sign me up. How do I get it? This is how I get it. Through being humble and having the fear of God in me. Right? It's interesting because anxious people and prideful people, right? Matter of fact, the whole world, what we seek for is riches, honor, and life, right? We always are looking for science experiments and pills and, and laser treatments that we can do to expand our life, to look younger, to look healthier. We're always working so hard to get a better job, to get a promotion, to keep climbing that ladder, right? The riches. And while we do that, right, well, we're climbing that ladder and getting the promotions and being the best in our field, we're getting honor. Or we, should, we feel like we should. That's all we strive for, right? We strive for a long life. We strive for honor and we strive for riches. And yet, right here, it tells us exactly how to get it. And it is not through hard work. It is not through being overtired. 
and over worried. As a matter of fact, we know that anxiety causes heart attacks and causes disease. Anxiety is crippling. It causes our head to hurt, right? When we start worrying, when we start feeling anxious, it's like a burden comes up on our shoulders and all of a sudden we're tense, right? And our neck hurts and we start getting tension headaches and our eyes all of a sudden can't focus. That's the opposite of life. That is the opposite of good, right? So while the world strives to get all these things, we have the answer right here. And it says the reward, right? The reward for humility is riches, honor, and life. And riches to the world just means more zeros in your bank account, more, car, more cars, more houses, more this, more that. Riches for me is peace, <laughs> it's joy, right? Life for me is not looking younger or looking better, it's living a full life, right? And those around me to be healthy and walking with the Lord. I don't care about the honors of this world. I want the crowns in heaven. I want the Lord to give me these things, not the world. And so I want to encourage you to set aside your anxiety, set aside your worrying, and really surrender to the God of the universe. Go under his authority and seize, right? We're going to seize, we're gonna lay down our weapons, which by the way, are not even strong enough because he is God and we are not. So seize your worrying, cast your worries onto the Lord, lay them at the altar, go into your prayer closet and speak to him. He is listening. He has promised to give you peace, right? Go in there and talk to him and be grateful for the things that you do have and the things that are going right. And you will start seeing your mind, which he guards, by the way. There's a mindset switch when we focus on humility and we, when we surrender to his will instead of fighting against it. So please be encouraged by this word. I pray that it touches you. I pray that the Lord uses it to bring you on to a different season in your life. The Lord be with you. Grace and peace.